Hello everyone. Last time I was talking to you, I mentioned a seaweed that grows here called corrigine. Um, it's also known as Condus crispus, that's its Latin name, and it's also known as Irish moss. And it's a seaweed that grows here on the um, west coast of Ireland, but it grows along all the Atlantic seaboards of America and Northern Europe. And it's a fantastic cough remedy. And um, my brother's just come down with the cough, so I'm going to make him a remedy from it and show you how to do it yourself. I'm just going to pop the corrigine into a saucepan. I've got some filtered water. See, that's just a little handful. That'll be enough for one person. So I'm just going to get um, about a pint of water. I'm using filtered water because um, I want to make sure that it's as pure a product as possible. And I'm just going to pop this on the stove to come to the boil. So while it's boiling away, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. It grows on the um, low tide rocks and it's collected by fishermen and people, or it was for years and years, and it's often sold to um, the cosmetics industry because apart from it being a wonderful cough remedy, it's also a great demulcent, which means it's very moisturizing and soothing. So it's great for skin care. It's very good in products for people with psoriasis or eczema because it's so soothing and soft to the skin. So it's also very soothing for the mucous membranes of the chest. So if you have a very dry hacking cough, it's going to be very soothing. It's also an expectorant, so it's going to help you get up the phlegm. And it's also um, got a lot of other medicinal qualities. So for example, it has vitamin A, it has um, potassium and iron, and it also ha it's also an antibacterial and antiviral. So if you have any kind of a viral cough, um, Corrigine is your man to go to and you can it used to be used in the past as well for people who were convalescing and Unfortunately, we don't really have a convalescent um, Mentality any longer people don't get nursed at home and they don't convalesce the idea is take something that will suppress your symptoms and get yourself back to work or school as quickly as possible but I think really for the for the body system when you're nursing, when you're looking after somebody who is sick with a cough or a cold or any other thing, that they should have time to recover and convalesce. And in the past, corrigine, because it is so um, beneficial and so full of nutrition, it would be made into little puddings and things. And it still is today. It's on, you know, if you go to a super duper top restaurant, you may come across um, a pudding made with um corrigine because it makes a kind of a jelly a lovely jelly corrigine contains a lot of mucilage that's what makes it so demulcent and so soothing and so moisturizing and the mucilage when you're simmering your corrigine it kind of becomes very jelly like so the puddings would have been like a jelly pudding and um it's very bland. It's it's given to convalescents because it's bland and because it's full of nutrition. But if you want to take it as a health supplement, you can make it more tasty by adding things like lemon. Obviously, you've got your vitamin C content or ginger, which again is antibacterial and very warming if you if you're feeling cold and shivery. Um, sage is another great antibacterial and cloves. The, the spice that we use at Christmas time is also very good for supporting the immune system. So I'm going to put a little bit of all of these into my brother's remedy that I'm making. So I'm just going to chop very finely while we're waiting for the corrigine to come to, to a boil and then we simmer it. I'm going to chop up some ginger and lemon. The corrigine's reached the boil. So I'm going to take off the lid and just let it simmer for a few more minutes while I continue to prepare the ginger and the lemon. I've got a jam jar to put it in to take around to my brother's. Now, if I was to leave it in here, um, it would turn into a jelly and that would be fine. He could just eat it. 
but um, it would be nice if you rewarmed it so that you could drink it because it's very, very soothing. So I have my ginger reasonably finely chopped. I'm going to squeeze some lemon. I've got a half a lemon that I'm going to squeeze. Just makes it taste really nice and then you're getting all the vitamin C as well. And I think I'll add a few um, little sage leaves because they're such a good herb for throats and chests, but throats especially and of course often when you get a cough you might start with a sore throat. And it's going to help you to sweat it out. It's going to soothe the mucous membranes of your lungs. It's going to work as an antiviral, as an antibacterial. And um, this is the whole remedy I'm talking about. And it's going to give you a boost with the vitamin C and the vitamin A. So again, I, what I keep liking to promote is the self-empowerment thing you can just Look after yourself, have this ready, make it fresh and whatever way suits you and you'll be as right as rain in no time. Part of the thing of herbal medicine is they tend to be so soothing and, um, and help you to feel as if you're really doing your body some good. And a lot of herbs have nutritional value as well. So the corrugine has... Uh, minerals as well as vitamin A and vitamin A is a great antioxidant so that's going to be good for the lungs too. So now I'm just going to pop those into the pan while it's simmering and I'm going to give it a little stir. You see how jelly like it is now. You can add your own um, preferences, you know, if you don't like sage or if you prefer orange juice, if you don't like cloves, you can leave them out. It depends on what your preferences are, but you can just take it completely bland and it will do just as good a job. I'm going to strain it into um, a jug before I put it into the jar to take around to my brother. Now, a lot of people will also want to add a sweetener. So again, that's your choice. I'm not going to put one in this time because I don't know how sweet. I know my brother doesn't have a very sweet tooth, so he may get away with the sweetness of the lemon um, and he might just tough it out anyway. But you could use honey, you can use brown sugar. I think the best thing to do would be to use honey because it has its own antibacterial and antimicrobial qualities and it's a sweetener. So you're going to get some goodness from the honey as well. When you're pushing it through the sieve, you want to push as much as you can through. So it can take a few minutes. Obviously, you won't get the chopped herbs and ginger through, but all of the moisture, the mucilage from the corrugine should be pushed through the sieve. I will leave um, the recipe and the description of how to do it in the section below the film so you can try and do it yourself. If you're in Ireland you can definitely get this in a health shop and I'm sure in uh, if you're in America there will be kind of Irish grocery shops that you might be able to find it in if you can't get it in a health shop over there. So you can see how much of this has gone through now with pushing it down with the wooden spoon. So I'm going to pour in the lemon juice. And give it a stir. And now I'm going to transfer it into the jar to take around to my poor ailing brother with his hacking sore cough. It's another wonderfully 
um, therapeutic remedy from Mother Nature and um, hopefully it'll sort my brother out. And it's just another way to feel self-empowered by making your own medicine. And if you're interested in medicine making, have a look at my Udemy courses. I've got two courses for winter wellness and for spring tonics. And um, have a look at the website because there's a few herb courses on there too. And um, next time I will show you how to use Corrigeen to make um, a skin balm for people who have eczema or psoriasis or very, very sore, dry skin because it's, that's amazingly effective as well. So I'm taking this to my brother now and then I've got trees to plant because it's a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye.